Before we get into this episode, I definitely want to just go ahead and do a medical disclaimer. Nothing that I share on this podcast or on this particular episode is to treat, cure, or diagnose any medical condition. Please take all of those concerns that you may have to your doctor. I am not an expert. (laughs) I am not a doctor. I am just someone who is sharing things for informational purposes only. So please consult your doctor. You're listening to episode 78 of the Style and Stewardship Podcast. So in this episode, I'm talking about a plethora of things that all affect how we eat. And so many people have this concept of wanting a perfect diet or trying to find the perfect diet. Um, I have been <laughs> right there um, with both of those um, desires. But I think we concentrate on the wrong things when we're looking at one specific diet to um, just be, you know, just the end all be all. You know, we we go through different seasons. Our bodies need different things during different times. And it's way more important that we figure out where our food's coming from, um, how to cook our food, if we're even eating food that has been prepared in a way that our body can actually utilize as far as nutrients and as far as absorption goes. So I'm talking about anti-nutrients. I'm talking about why our stomachs can never be compared to that of animals. And if you have watched any of the food documentaries, which I did years and years ago when I first became vegan, and I also share some reasons why I stopped doing that. One of those things, a hint is protein is not protein is not protein. Protein is very Anyways, I'm going to let you listen to the episode. We're talking about micronutrients. We're talking about there's not a perfect way to eat. We're talking about regenerative regenerative farming, um, GI issues, food preparation, learning, unlearning (laughs) what it means to be healthy. And I hope that you get a lot out of this episode. If you have any questions, you can send them into hello at styleandstewardship.com in the subject line pod question. I hope this encourages you. One of the issues that I see with whenever we're doing these whole overhauls of our diets is one of the things that I experienced when I was vegan for like two years and my son was actually raised vegan for the first two years of his life. And I will link that show notes, but we, I mean, when I say we caused issues in our health due to going vegan. The reason why I'm saying this, and I'm not just pointing that one out. There are so many other things that I have done as far as eliminations and removing things from my diet. Um, When those things are removed from your diet, you're also removing the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the phytochemicals, and the, the, you know, the specific types of fats that those things have all in one fell swoop. So if you think about this, you're eating some way for a really, really long time. And unless it's just a horrific way of eating that's terrible for you, that's void of nutrition, I would say at that point, more likely than not, you're actually adding something if you change your diet, which is typically the standard American diet, also known as the SAD diet, where we're eating a lot of processed food and ultra processed food and many man-made things and things that are not very close to what they were originally supposed to be. You can have junk food Um, and I call it junk food because there's very little nutrient diversity. There's very, there's not any nutrient density, which means that they may be full of calories, but lacking in the things that the body actually needs to eat, to live, to thrive, and for your body to do all the things that your body needs to do that God designed it to do. So in saying all of that, it's not just a plant-based or a vegan diet or just a paleo diet or just the keto diet or any of these things that is just one issue. These all have a similar issue in the fact that whenever we are cutting something out of our diet and we're not bringing those things back into our diet, that's when we start having issues. So here's the thing. Our body needs certain things. It needs all of the macronutrients, but I'm going to talk about protein for a moment. It needs all of the macronutrients. That is your protein, your fat, and your carbohydrates. Protein, I'm going to to say protein for last. Carbohydrates get broken down into glucose in the body. Fat gets broken down into essential fatty acids for the body. Protein 
gets broken down into specific essential amino acids that the body cannot make on its own and must get get from food. So as we're talking about all these different things that the body needs and we're talking about protein quality, this is what's interesting. So when I was vegan or plant-based or whatever we want to call it, where I wasn't eating meat or eggs or any dairy or anything like that, I was still having honey. So I say vegan loosely because most people that are vegans don't eat that because it came from an animal. So here's the thing. When you are eating something and the package says that it has such and such amount of protein. Yes, it may have that amount of protein, but does it have the essential amino acids that the body has to take in from food because it can't make it on its own? Many times the answer to that is no. So pro, when we're looking at the back of a nutrition label and it says it has this amount of protein, that to our, you know, and I just recently learned this, honestly, was that protein is not just protein. Where protein is from has to be something that the body can use, which means it has to be bioavailable. Just because because beans have a certain amount of protein in them does not mean that it has all the essential um all the essential amino acids, which is why you'll see a lot of things that are plant-based say eat beans with rice and now you have a complete protein. Why are they saying quote unquote complete protein? The reason why we're saying complete protein is because Just beans or just rice on their own do not have all of the amino acids that are necessary for the body. But when we dig a little deeper, even deeper than that, the issue with, say, beans and rice, there is something called anti-nutrients. So seeds and nuts and beans, all of these things, which a, you know, a bean is technically a seed of the plant, right? So when we're talking about nuts and seeds, We have to remember some very important things. We are biologically different than, say, a bird, right? Which is typically the animal that eats nuts and seeds. You have bears, you have squirrels, you have different things. We're not going to get into all of the animal kingdom that eats it. But the point is saying things that eat, animals that eat that for sustenance have a very, very different makeup than a human being just like you would see like these documentaries that would say you know oh you know a cow it only eats grass it's vegetarian and look at how big it is well here's the thing we are not cows we are not (laughs) we do not have eight chambers in our stomachs that can get away with eating and regurgitating and re-chewing and reprocessing the same grain or grass or whatever over and over and over again chewing the cut right That is not what the human body does. We have a very specific system. Keep these things in mind as I'm going along because these are things that I really had to Um, really had to learn because when you do something for years and years of your life, there's an unlearning that has to take place. So part of learning is like, okay, let's hold this up to facts. Let's hold this up to my feelings. Let's hold this up to my experience. But at the end of the day, what actually happens? If we don't talk about anything else, biologically, physiologically, what happens? So back in the day, food was produced and made in a certain manner, right? And that food was grown and eaten and prepared in very specific ways. Let's take nuts and beans, for example. People in other cultures soak their beans and sprout them, which is why when we do buy um, seeds, which we do eat seeds and nuts in our home, I buy organic sprouted if I can get my hands on it. Because what this means is that the body can now use the nutrients that are in that food. So when we're talking about anti-nutrients, you can eat all the plants that you want, all the beans you want, the nuts, the seeds, the rice, and all of those things. However, if they are not prepared in a certain way, you will actually cause distress to your gastrointestinal um, your gastrointestinal your tract, your GI tract, because our bodies do not break down certain things. Take, for instance, corn. If you were to eat corn kernels right now and say a whole one went down, if you were to look in your stool, I am sorry, I should probably say a disclaimer, but if you were to look in your stool, you will see that 
piece of corn fully intact. When birds eat seeds, this is exactly what happens. This is made to survive the, the GI tract. Even with all of our stomach acid, our hydrochloric acid, and all of those things, our bodies do not break this down. This is why we say they have anti-nutrients because they literally block the absorption of zinc, iron, and calcium, right? When we're taking these things in. So we can say, oh, I'm eating healthy, I'm eating healthy, I'm eating healthy, but it, the body, and I say this all the time because this is something I say to myself, if the stomach can't digest it, the body can't absorb it, which means you can't get the benefit that that product, that food, that item has in it. That's a big deal. So if we can't use it, we can't utilize it, we can't get the quote unquote benefits of whatever that thing may be. So nuts and seeds and beans. So nuts and seeds and beans, when these things are typically eaten, especially in other cultures or even just traditionally back in our back in our day, right, um, of what our great, great, great grandparents or what even just our great grandparents ate and how they produced things and made things, they understood that beans had to be soaked in the water, you know, poured off and soaked and or sprouted and or fermented. And the reason why they they did that, they did things like lacto ferment, which they would take certain things that were hard for the body to break down and they would actually add the whey from milk, that clear part that would be like on the top of your yogurt if you opened, you know, a, a thing of yogurt right now. And they would put that so it could lacto ferment. Why were they doing that? Because there's a bacteria naturally found in, you know, all, pretty much every species that has milk has within it, right? This builds the baby's immune system. Um, so nurse, nursed babies, we can get into that in a whole other com- conversation, but milk naturally has back active cultures in it, active live bacteria, right? These are the things that help to break down the hard shell, the hard outer covering of the nuts and the seeds. So keep all of this in mind. If we are not doing that, processing our food in that way, preparing our food for ingestion, then what we're doing is we're actually causing a lot of GI discomfort and upset and issues within our gastrointestinal tract because our bodies were not meant to just go around eating seeds and nuts all day or beans all day. Um, We need a diversity in our diets. So when we're talking about um, eating quote unquote healthy or having protein and what that looks like, protein is not just protein. Protein is what we read on the label and that's what we call as a major macronutrient, right? The three that we all need. However, protein is not equal to all protein and all protein is not equal in the human body. So our body is eating these proteins to break down into amino acids, And if say I'm eating something that says it has 25 grams of protein, does it matter if that's not a complete protein? It really doesn't matter to the extent of I'm trying to get, you know, eat in an optimal way. If you just want to eat some protein, just so you're a little more satiated. Awesome. I'm not saying that it has no bearings on anything, but I am saying when we're looking at the whole picture and we're not just looking at protein for protein's sake, but we're actually looking for optimal nutrition and value to the body and essential to the body, aka essential amino acids broken down from that that complete protein. Now we're talking about a completely different story. So we have people that will say, you know, eat this way. This is the perfect way to eat or eat that way. It's the perfect way to eat. I will never even get on this podcast and tell you this is the perfect way to eat because our bodies go through seasons where we need more support. Um, Stress, for example, depletes us of minerals, the soil and the condition of it now and how processed things have become, the fertilizers and the pesticides and the, 
you know, glyphosate that's used on things that destroy the microbiome and destroy the bacteria that's naturally found in the soil, where our soil doesn't have as much sulfur as it did at one point. We're no longer rotating things in, in an agricultural manner and doing regenerative farming. You know, back in the day, they would have a plot of land and they wouldn't use this land to death. Um, and then, you know, just keep doing that year after year because why it's depleted. So they would rotate crops. If you've never heard, like I, I'm, I'm not a farmer, but I know the concept of rotating crops. And the reason why you would do that is you would plant something different after you harvested something. And then, you know, we even read in scripture, there's a time where the land has to rest. Even, you know, all of these things have been screaming at us from all over but we've gotten into such a place of going through the drive through asking zero questions about where our food is coming from at the supermarket. Voting with our dollars is what we do every time we buy something. We're telling a company, I want this, produce more of this. However you produced it doesn't matter, but just bring it to my door. The problem is, is we're so detached from what it looks like to actually eat real food. And we've complicated it more and more by saying the issue that we're having with our health is we haven't found a perfect diet. But the fact of the matter is, is the diet isn't as much the issue is not getting the the diversity of the things that God has created for our bodies to ingest. So this has so many layers and I could talk about this probably for hours. Um, but what we have to really get um, a hold of when I say we, I'm holding up my hand too. You just can't see me. But what we have to get a hold of is that it matters how our food was produced. It matters how our food is prepared and it matters what we're actually taking into our bodies. Are we even getting the nutrients that our body needs? We can't focus on just macros. We also need micronutrients. We also need um, you know, sunlight we <laughs> for vitamin D and to absorb the vitamin D from the sun, our body needs cholesterol, which means we have to have fat in our diets. So there was a whole craze of fat free everything for a point in time. And we've been marketed to for so long that, and we've been asking companies how we should eat and governments, how we should eat. And these things have been legislated into the very fabric of our culture, where we believe that it is, you know, the doctor that's going to tell us what's best for us to eat. When the doctor himself, I love doctors, thank God for them. But the amount of nutrition that they get trained in is is null. You know, um, it takes the consumer to not just be a consumer, but to be educated and empowered through that education to make decisions that are supporting this body that God has given us to steward so that we can steward all the other things that God has given us to manage. And I get like really, really passionate about it because I feel like it's like the missing, you know, what does Satan want to do? He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. We think that that's like relegated to certain areas, but it's everything. He wants us sick, you know, any way that we can be less effective in any way that we can be, um, that our, you know, our work in this world can be diminished somehow or lessened to some degree is what he's after. So I, I say all of these things to say, I'm on this podcast. I am on YouTube. <laughs> um, I'm going to be writing some articles for my blog as well, because I'm real. I really, really want all of us to be educated with our food choices because it's not just food. It's the very thing that is outside, apart from God, it's the physical thing that is sustaining our life that God created to do, you know, to do so, to, to, to fulfill the needs that he created this body to need and who created food. God did. You know, so all of these things circle back to him. Nature circles back to him. Science just confirms what he's already put out here. Um, and we're still learning about the human body and we will be learning about the human body, I believe forever. And we'll never get to the bottom of how everything works together in such a magnificent 
or perfectly orchestrated way. Even in this fallen world, we can see the miracle that the body is. Well, I do. Um, and it is truly amazing to me. So when we're talking about nutrition and we're talking about food and we're talking about what should we eat and should I eat? You know, we, we have these different camps of thought of do just keto or do just um, whatever new thing is about. The fact of the matter is, is even when we didn't have all these diets and all this stuff going on, how did we eat? Before Weight Watchers, and I'm not picking on Weight Watchers or Nutrisystem, my grandmother did all of them, all of them, <laughs> Slim Fast, Atkins, South Beach, you name it, she did it. We did a lot of them, a lot of those diets with her. And the what's really interesting is that we can carve our, we can carve a box for ourselves and we think that if I do all of these right things, quote unquote, I'm holding air quotes, you can't see me, but <laughs> I talk on my hands. I'm literally walking around as I'm, I'm recording this podcast because I just got so hype. <laughs> I get really passionate about this, but we are quote unquote eating all the right things and doing all the right things, but we are still feeling sick or we're still feeling terrible. And this is a fallen world. Our bodies are not perfect. Our bodies are not meant to last here perfectly. Um, and we know that there is going, God is going to give us a new, <laughs> a new one, you know? So all of those things are, are important that we still take care of what's here and now. And, I, and if you're anything like me, you want to live optimally. You want to do all the things God has called you to do. And you want to have the energy and the stamina and the, just the requirements that the body demands to do all of those things you know, and rest. And we want our minds to be refreshed and we want to renew our minds in the word and, and just carry out all the things that God has called us to do and being the hands and feet of Jesus. And it's really hard to do that if we are sick, if we feel terrible. And I'm not talking about the things that are going to happen to us in a fallen world. And the fact that their sin and death entered the world through Adam. And we are all, you know, um, part of this world with the, the fallen nature God still, I believe, you know, desires that the things that he created for us to use them and that being food and real food, not the stuff that we have um, just truly we've degraded what food actually is and we've diminished the quality of it so much that we are supplementing everything. And don't get me wrong, I love supplements. I think that they are absolutely amazing. I'll do an entire podcast episode on that because there is definitely a place for that. But there are things that our body should be getting from our food because God created our bodies in such a way that that is what it requires. We need water. We need minerals. You know, we need electrolytes. So we need phytochemicals. We need all of these things. And, you know, to fight free radicals and the antioxidants that are necessary to do, to do that, that are literally in the things that God created, um, like blueberries, you know, like cherries, like raspberries, all of these things God created and they have anti-cancer properties with them in them, you know, so we would be crazy to say that how we eat doesn't matter as long as we pray and we do good works. And it's like, no, 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 no. Um, that stewarding means that God has given us something to manage. And I don't think that we're supposed to manage flippantly, you know, and this is not a moral issue. <laughs> Food is not a moral issue, but there's a lot of spiritual, um, connotation to how we treat this body, this temple of the Holy spirit and how we are providing for it by the things that God has provided for us to have for it. Right. Right. So it's not just I'm, you know, going through the drive through and that's no big deal. Um, if we are already sick, why not? Let's 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 go through the drive through a little bit less. You know, when we are going, are we asking questions? Are we reading labels? Do we know the ingredients that's in that thing that we're about to take in? Because, you know, we <laughs> I saw this meme. It was a while ago and it was like, God, you know, bless this food that I'm about to eat. And the person like pans down. And the food is like every piece of junk food that you can imagine with everything of like all the artificial stuff, all the man-made stuff. And it's like, you're asking God to bless a bad decision. <laughs> 
Like seriously, um, that was my thought. Like you're asking God to bless a bad decision. And don't get me wrong. I make the ones that I make in a time crunch. Sometimes I'm just treating myself. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. But without God, we're not balanced with any of those things. We can get so fixated on a perfect diet that we miss out on the fact that God has created all things for us to enjoy, you know, all things for. And I truly believe that God, you know, created food for us to enjoy because he would not have given. I truly believe he would not have given us taste buds if he didn't expect for us to enjoy these things and to to get pleasure out of, you know, eating. It's a it's a beautiful thing. I'm a foodie. Like seriously, I can sit down and talk about food. Um like some people probably sit down and talk about sports. Like <laughs> like it's I, I love it. Um and I love that God has given us these it's another good gift. Um all good gifts, you know, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights, right? Um comes down from God. And when it comes to um, eating, <clears throat> excuse me, eating things that support this body that he has given us. I believe that that, um, is something that is really amazing and we should do that as we can. But in the midst of all of this, we're all confused. We're all confused, right? Because we've gotten so far away from the connection that we had with making, growing our own food and, and, you know, passing down the traditions of how to prepare food properly. You know, we've gotten to the point where we fry everything, we bread everything, flour is involved in every step of the process. If we buy something from a, a store, you know, it has corn syrup in it. We eat more corn than probably any animal <laughs> ever could. Um, because it is given to us in so many different ways. I can do an entire podcast episode on corn and all the different names of corn and all the different ways that we are consuming it and don't even know it. Like maltodextrin, ascorbic acid. Um, like seriously, we're eating corn everywhere we turn around. It's not just the high fructose corn syrup. And when that corn is from genetically modified ingredients that have been degraded of any nutrient value, and has harmful things in it now, what's happening in our bodies? Like these things are not um, innocuous. Like we are taking this stuff in and it has an impact. Until next time, your life matters. What you do with it matters. So what will you steward well?